You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to My Strategy with author and personal growth coach, John M. Hawkins. John will provide coaching and inspiration, motivation and advice on your personal development in order to help you with the best decision making possible. So now, please welcome the host of My Strategy, John M. Hawkins. Hello and welcome, everyone. I'm the host, John M. Hawkins. I'm coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you are listening to my strategy. We're very happy to be here with you today. Really glad that you could join us. Our episodes are live and always on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're going to be talking about uh, something that happened this week. It's the college cheating scandal. We're going to talk a little bit about the cheating scandal, the parent strategy, and the choices they used with regard to these cheating tactics to accomplish a near impossible goal. And I think all of this relates nicely with what our show is all about, which is personal growth and personal development. Well, again, happy to be here today with you. Saturday is a great day to reflect. It's the day of the week that I choose to start thinking about my strategy and what I should be working on, and I think you should consider doing the same. Of course, any time is a great time to assess your strategy. Now, our show is growing. We're now available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more. So if you'd like to listen to this episode in a recorded format or visit, see past episodes, you can go and listen to them there. You can find me on most social media platforms. Uh, my Twitter handle is HawkinsJohn, or you can go to JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals, because the best laid plans don't always work. And we are always looking for tips from you or stories. In this case, we're focusing on the cheating scandal, so send us those. Uh, you can send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or if you'd like to be on the show or want to uh, have a conversation, you can also send your request to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Well, the cheating scandal, and hopefully you may have heard of this uh, this week. Uh, there's a college cheating scandal uh, where parents were doing things, making bad choices uh, to get their children into some of the elite schools. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about why these parents chose this strategy, and most importantly, why would they choose the illegal tactics that they did to accomplish these misguided goals? We're going to talk about what happened, who was impacted. We're going to talk about why do smart people make these bad choices. And then talk a little bit about what were they thinking? What strategy? What was their vision, their goal? What were they trying to accomplish by doing these things? We're also going to talk about a woman who was jailed for lying about her address on the school application form. This is in 2011. Uh, Williams Bowler went to jail for falsifying her daughter's home address. We're going to talk about that. Then going to talk about life not being very fair and the things that we can do if we do not get into the college of our choice. And then we're going to bring it all together and talk about ways that we can create strategies and tactics to help us reach our goals. Well, the cheating scandal you know, many of us expect to play within the rules, expect the rules to be fair, and expect equitable treatment. Seems fair enough, right? But that wasn't the case. On the 12th of this week, 
It came out that uh, actress Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman, along with more than 30 other wealthy parents, have been charged with fraud following an investigation into a massive college admission scam. According to the court documents associated with the case, the scam involved parents paying tens of thousands of dollars to William Rick Singer, who is the alleged mastermind behind the scheme, to arrange for someone to take SATs, acts, in their children's stead, or to make up face profiles. And some of these profiles and what they had them do are really, I mean, they're really bad. I mean, they really are things that when you think about a strategy, when you think about trying to accomplish a goal, there's always a certain limit, a line that you don't cross. In this case, it is alleged that some of these parents urged, instructed their children to pretend they were stupid when they were evaluated as to whether or not they needed extra time to take standardized tests. So for those students who have ADHD or other learning disabilities, they can get extra time to take the test. So parents coach their children while taking these college tests to be stupid, act stupid. Another thing that happened was payments were funneled through a sham charity organization, the Key Worldwide Foundation. The, this is allegedly that they were funneled through. Uh, when KWF was investigated by the IRS in late 2018, C1 one allegedly phoned a parent to tell them that my story is essentially that you gave your money to our foundation to help underdeserving kids. There's parents who are trying to get their children into elite universities, lying about payments they're making, saying they're for undeserved kids. Another one is college application essays were allegedly edited to include information that would get kids into the school of their choice. In one instance, a parent who wanted to place their child on the Georgetown University tennis team alleged, allegedly uh, bribed one of the tennis coaches there. Another account here is they alleged photoshopping applicants' faces onto stock photos of athletes, and in some cases in a ridiculous way. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine your parents taking a picture of an athlete at your school, cutting out your face, pasting it, or in this case, photoshopping it in and sending it in on your application? It says here Felicity Hoffman was concerned about getting caught. She's one of these high-profile defendants. And she said that um, she had used this organization for her oldest daughter, but for the second one, she did not because she was concerned about it. So there, she's got some indicators that things were not on the up and up. Another one is they came up with an elaborate excuse for kids who were admitted as student athletes under false pretenses to explain why they didn't play in college. So they went through the effort of setting up fake profiles for student athletes and candidates, some of whom didn't even play a sport when they were, they were allegedly being recruited for. He did have a bit of a problem how to explain the fact that he wouldn't continue playing sports once they arrived on campus. Another example is we have uh, Lori Laughlin's daughter, Olivia Jade, who was fraudulently admitted to USC as a crew recruit, is an Instagram influencer who reportedly hates school. Laughlin and her husband, fashion designer Massimo Giannulli, allegedly paid five hundred thousand to CW. Have both their daughters admitted to UC, to USC as crew recruits? Another one here. We have a situation where most of the kids didn't even know about the scheme, which I find is a little bit hard to believe since they're asking them to lie about their intelligence. But apparently, these parents did it without. And the final one here is somebody actually went out there. And lied about the height of their student. They said the boy was six foot one when in reality he was five foot five. So all of this is happening. And, you know, I start thinking about how does this impact personal development? How does this impact us? Well, it's a huge impact. It's a huge impact because better deserving, better qualified students did not get in. They did not get merit scholarships. They did not have the opportunity afforded to them because a parent had set a goal that might have been unreachable or unattainable. Yet rather than changing their course of actions or their strategy, they used illegal tactics to try and make it happen. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
When we come back, we're going to talk about their the parent strategy. We'll be right back. Sensitive, beautiful, feminine, and devotional. These are just some of the words to describe the art of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg, creator of the website IsisRising.net. Mr. Berg's paintings are designed to inspire and awaken the ancient goddess within. He feels that artists have an important role to play in changing the patriarchal world we live in, with a unique ability to create a visual image that can inspire viewers to reinvent themselves. These feminine images create a visual connection to a woman's primal roots, her relationship to nature, and her goddess-based spirituality. Both men and women can benefit from a deeper respect and understanding of what it means to be a woman in attunement to her inner being. Go to IsisRising.net to view the works of male feminist artist Kimberly Berg and be inspired. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Today we're talking about the college cheating scandal. Right before the break, we were talking about what parents went through and the lengths they did to cheat on their uh, children's applications so that they could get into some of the prestigious colleges. Now, mind you, these were not hardworking, everyday Students, these were uh, people who were part of film, CEOs, and other high-profile wealthy individuals. They did things such as photoshopping their students, their child's face on a student-athlete's body and then sending that in. Uh, they lied about sports and a number of other things. Well, I guess my question now is why were they doing this or why did they do this? So I want to think a little bit about, you know, what were they thinking? And in this case, you know, when you start thinking about a vision or a goal and what you want to achieve, that vision is something that, you know, is an aspired state. It's aspirational. It's where you want to go. And in this case, the parents had an aspiration. They had a vision of where they wanted their children to go, what their lives should be like. But we don't always get our way, and in certain cases, we have to execute on those strategies and those everyday tactics to try and make our dreams happen. Well, in this case, the parents went a little bit above and beyond when they saw that their children might not be able to make it into the prestigious schools that they had hoped they would. They went to extreme and illegal tactics. So I got to thinking about this and thinking about why would they do something like this? Well, I've got an article here from one of those elite university coaches, and I'm not going to give you the name just because of the sensitivity of these investigations, everything that's going on. But it kind of sets up what they're trying to sell and why a parent might be interested in it. So this is uh, basically an article that talks about the benefits of an elite university. It says it's about time for your student to start picking a college. That's right, for them. Do you prefer East Coast or West Coast? They like small colleges, large ones. And it says here, do they want to attend an elite Ivy League university or a state school or a community college? The author goes on to say that the state universities and community colleges are adequate, but the elite instructions benefits that you give you many benefits that you cannot get at state universities or community college. More academic rigor. You probably guessed this one. 
Courses taken at elite universities and Ivy League schools are much more rigorous than comparable courses taken at state or university colleges. So right now they're setting it up that these schools are better. They are preferred. They are desired. Number two, access to virtually every resource. Most schools offer a variety of resources to their students, including libraries and school space, but the resources offered by the elite universities in the Ivy League are especially amazing, it says here. Elite instru- institutions are home to a, vari- a variety of historical documents and artifacts, as well as the state-of-the-art labs and research facilities. Not only do elite universities offer these resources to their students, but they offer them to the students of other elite universities as well. So you get access to this club. Next one is access to alumni. Nearly all, and they have here pictured uh, John F. Kennedy, Bill Gates, and Barack Obama. Nearly all of the world's most prominent leaders attended elite universities or Ivy League institutions. Oftentimes, these notable alumni alumni return to their schools and make speeches, hold master's classes, and sometimes they just come to hang out. And if your student attends an elite university, they're going to have the opportunity to meet and learn from all these amazing alumni. What about socialization, socialism, socialization amongst other elite students? So now your child gets to be part of an elite club. It may sound familiar, the old phrase, um, you are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. So why not surround your child with brilliant people? Again, we're reading from a blog that was written by one of these coaches who tries to help get children into elite schools. It says here, it goes without saying that professors at elite, at elite universities are brilliant. But elite universities are unique in that every student is brilliant as well. He goes on to talking about what makes these students so special. Next thing he talks about is get the leg up when applying to grad school. Is your child interested in grad school, medical, law? If you answered yes, then your child should consider attending an elite university. Why would attending an elite university give your child the leg up when applying to grad schools? Well, grad schools are interested in GPA. They also look at the overall difficulty of your child's course load. And as he described earlier, the courses at elite universities tend to be more rigorous. Final thing is average pay. He says that in the previous five, if the previous five benefits weren't convincing enough, he says he knows this one is, is that it's true that people who graduate from the top tier schools have higher income from those who graduate from state universities and community colleges. Well, here you go. You've got one of the reasons why parents go to extreme measures and extreme tactics to try and get their children into these elite schools. After reading that article, I don't know. I want my child to go to an elite school as well. It sounds wonderful. You're part of this special club. You're going to meet these alumni who are world leaders and heads of large corporations. You're only going to be going to school with other elite students, the smartest, the brightest in the world. You're going to be able to get into grad school much easier because you are studying with these elite students. And for those parents who buy into this and have no other vision for what their child could be doing, they get caught up and the goal is the only thing they focus on. My child must go to an elite university. If they don't, my child will not gain all of these benefits. And these are lifelong benefits. And you want your child to have the best. You, you know, people sac- parents sacrifice everything so their children can have the best or things that they could not have. So wouldn't you want the best for your student? And that's what happened in this situation. They had a vision for their student. They had a dream of what the student could achieve, the life they would be living They got caught up in all the benefits of trying to attend an elite university. Sounds like a pretty good life if you can get in. Sounds like you have everything at your fingertips. And if you have the money, but your student doesn't have the grades or isn't somebody who would get in normally, then why not do a few illegal tactics to help them get in. I guess it end justifies the mean. 
they're probably thinking that they're doing it for the benefits of their children, and that's why it's okay. We'll have to find out. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about a woman who was jailed for lying about her address on the school report. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave media and tune in radio are you looking for employment and live in los angeles orange riverside and san bernardino counties jobs annex is the place for you are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in los angeles orange riverside and san bernardino counties jobs annex is for you employers jobs is your resource for career-minded people jobs is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward jobs annex has been serving los angeles orange riverside and san bernardino Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. Jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to have you with us here today. Uh, Today, we're talking about the college cheating scandal, talking about the college cheating scandal, the parent strategy, and the choices uh, they used to accomplish a near impossible goal. And I should say the illegal choices that they chose to accomplish this goal. We'd love to get your thoughts. Um, You can call our studio number at 866-451-1451 or send us an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. And if you do send an email, we have a weekly giveaway where we give away a copy of my latest book, Coach to Greatness, along with a $25 Visa gift card. So that is by sending an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. All right, before the break, we were talking about why parents might start to cheat to get their children into elite schools. In this segment, I want to talk about a woman who was jailed for lying on her address. I've got an article here. Uh, From today, part of the parent section, it says it's by Mary Flum. Mom jailed for lying to get kids into a better school speaks out on college scandal. Now, there's multiple scandals going on. This last scandal I mentioned happened this past week. This particular scandal happened in 2011. It says here, at first glance, it may not seem like Kelly Williams Bullar has much in common with the actress Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin, who were involved in the scandal trying to get their own daughters into elite schools. Says uh, these embroiled actresses in a college admission scandal. This particular woman works as a 48-year-old single mom. So now we're talking about the woman in this article from 2011. Not the actresses. So it says this 48 year old single mom works as a teacher's aide in a high school for students with disabilities in Akron, Ohio. Far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Still, she says she knows what it's like to do something dishonest in a bid to provide her children with a better education. And she knows what it's like to be taken into custody and appear before a judge for illegally trying to give her kids a better future. In 2011, Williams Bolar 
went to jail for falsifying her daughter's home address so that they could attend school in a better school district than the one they were zoned for in an inner city neighborhood. So you've got Williams Bolar, who says, well, I'm just going to go ahead and put down an address in the school district because where I live, the schools aren't as good. She said she wanted them to have a good life. I wanted them, I wanted to send them to one of the best schools. What I did was not in the best interest of my daughters. Williams Bolar used her father's or her biological father's home address as her own in 2009 so that her daughters, then ages 12 and 19, could attend school in the Copley Fair Lawn School District, which was an affluent school district. That makes sense, right? I mean, you've got a father who has a daughter and the daughter has two children and the um daughter lives in a lower income neighborhood grandpa says hey why don't you just use my address if you use my address my grandkids can go to school in this school district so she used it she said she had no idea that they were breaking any laws until she received a postcard saying that she was being indicted and the case caught national media attention. Ultimately, William Bolar was found guilty of grand theft and tampering with, tampering with evidence and sentenced to 10 days in jail, three years of probation and given a $70,000 fine. She says it was a nightmare. Williams Bolar said of her time behind bars, she read the Bible every day and was scared to be there. She said she felt into a depressive state. So naturally, when Williams Bolar, who was accused of and, and keep in mind, this isn't even college that she was trying to get her kids into. She was trying to get them into, it looks like, middle school at 9 and 12. So she's trying to get them into middle school, and she had to pay $70,000 and go to jail over this. So when she heard about Huffman and Laughlin, and Huffman and Laughlin are the um, actresses who are allegedly uh, hired this um, coach – to do things illegally to get their own daughters into college, elite colleges. It says here that um, in an effort to get their daughters into the colleges of their choice, she had mixed emotions on this, which would make sense, right? I mean, one of them is grade school and the other one, or middle school, the other one is elite Ivy League schools. She said one part of her was stunned at the level of alleged dishonesty, she said. They'd already had so much and just wanted more. But the overarching emotion, Williams Bolar said, was that she felt compassion for these people. The socioeconomic backdrop is completely different. It's two different cases, absolutely, and they definitely were all about status. But she can identify with them. Williams Bolar says they're all moms. Mothers want good education for their kids. That's what they have in common. When she watched the video of them with their daughters, she could see the passion in their eyes for their children. She could see the love. She wants the best for their kids. Williams Bolar said that while a part of her feels bad for the disgraced actresses, another part of her hopes that justice will prevail and that Laughlin and Huffman will not be given a pass because of their wealth and status. I think they should have to serve some time, she said. I want to know how equal this will turn out to be. I do think they'll be treated differently because of their status. Their attorneys will argue they are first-time offenders. Well, I was a first-time offender too. It was a lie. Williams Bolar said her advice to Huffman and Laughlin is to accept responsibility for their actions and try not to blame others. I don't know. It's pretty interesting here. If we're talking about what the motivation is. You've got parents who want to do the best for their children, so they're passionate. They have a vision for where their children should be and where they want them to be. Perhaps they're trying to live a little bit uh, vicariously through their children. And one thing leads to another, and they get to a point where they have this vision of their child that is so great that they will stop at nothing to help that child achieve that vision. And even in, in this case, where they did illegal things, such as paying bribes, falsification of documents, all things that can land you in jail. 
Life isn't fair. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some alternatives to college. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it animal lover author artist and public speaker patricia daly life is a renaissance woman in her own right a lover of animals from a young age patricia lives on a farm in virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses keeping them or finding them safe havens she is also a published author and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, we're talking about the college cheating scandal, and if you haven't heard about it, uh, earlier this week on Tuesday morning, it was reported that actress Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman, along with more than 30 other wealthy parents, had been charged with fraud following an investigation into a massive college admission scam. According to court documents associated with the case, the scam involved parents paying tens of thousands of dollars to William Rick Singer, who is the alleged mastermind behind this, the scenes. The things he had them do was... He paid for others to take SATs for these students. They set up false athletic profiles. They paid bribes to college coaches and a number of other things. Right before the break, we were talking about a woman who was jailed back in 2009. This is a separate incident for falsifying documents. Her father... The grandfather to her children suggested that she use the his address to put to put on the application for school so that this, the children could go to a better school district. Well, this woman was jailed, so she was arrested. She had to pay a seventy thousand dollar fine and trying to get her life back on track. Well, I guess life isn't fair. Everyone is going to have some sort of advantage. You can't get past that. So it comes down to if you're not able to get into that top choice, how do you fall up? Are there any alternatives that you could do if you're not able to reach that goal, that vision that was set? Turns out that, you know, for those who chose illegal tactics to try and get their children into the schools of their dreams, rather than looking at the alternatives, they did something illegal. So in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about what are some of the alternatives. Now, these might not be acceptable for all, but I think these are definitely considerations. We don't always get what we want. We can't all go to Ivy League schools. We can't all make the most money, own, own the businesses we want. We're not all going to have the best kids. So this article here, uh, basically gives us some alternatives. It's by Jeremy Anderberg. He says, is college for everyone? And he gives us 11 
alternatives to the traditional four-year college. Some of these I agree with. Some of them, eh, we can put them up for debate. Number one, he says, why not just start a business? If you think about it, after investing in some of these elite colleges, you're looking at spending over $250,000 just to go to a four-year where if you took that money and invested it in a business, what could you make of yourself? He gives some examples. He says there's over 22 million individuals who are self-employed in the U.S. with no employees other than themselves. It's about 14% of the workforce. He points out some high-profile entrepreneurs who graduated without a college degree. You might recognize some of these names. Richard Branson, Michael Dell, Walt Disney, Henry Ford. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Milton Hershey, Frank Lloyd Wright. So why not start a business if you don't get into the school of your choice? He then has number two, which is attend a community college. And while community college doesn't carry the prestige, just the prestige of the four-year university, there are many benefits to this alternative path. You save a lot of money, the average credit, at a community college is 60, while the average credit hour at a four-year is around 300. And this is based on the dating of the articles. So they have gone up since then. It says it makes the transition to college easier. Gives you time to define, refine your interest. Definitely a viable, viable option for those who don't get into the four-year college nor the elite college that they try to get into. What about getting into a trade? Trade schools offer specific vocational training for a wide variety of skilled careers. Sometimes this means getting an associate degree at a community college, but many times it's simply a year or so at the technical school. I think this is a good point because even if you did graduate with a degree, if it is not in an area where you have a skill that an employer needs, and we talked about this in a previous episode, if you don't have a skill that the employer needs, you don't really have that much value. So you're going to have to get some sort of skill, regardless of whether you get that four-year degree or not. So what about a trade? You could always go to college in the evenings or online. It says there's lots of trades that you can go into. Mike Rowe, the former host of Dirty Jobs, is doing his best to dispel the stereotypes surrounding blue-collar workers and trying to revive interest in the trade skills. He said there were over 3 million jobs in 2008 that were sitting out there, and nobody really talked about them because they weren't aspirational. So, long story short, he figured a lack of appreciation for the skilled labor ultimately manifested itself in a kind of disconnect that led us to push kids in one direction, ignore each each. Uh, ignore the other directions and ultimately created a lot of jobs that nobody was enthused about. Works a four-letter word anyway. Does it matter exactly the type of job you're doing? If you're skilled and gaining satisfaction, then why not? What about being an artist? If you're passionate about being an artist and you want to get into art, whether it's music, sculpting, or painting, the author here says that if you were to go through and go to a four-year college, that you're going to have student debt to pay off. Why not jump into that profession now? What about online classes? You know, I think this is an important one because even though you do get your four-year degree or two-year degree, to keep going and to keep active, you're going to need to have certifications. You're going to need to continue your education. Online course levels have boomed in the last couple of years. Leading the way, well, that YouTube and a variety of websites freely offer lectures for the public to consume. There are lots of opportunity for you to take online courses. Another option, he says, is just take a job, take any job. The option that every 18-year-old should consider is simply to get a job, work for a year before deciding on their college path. Even if you start at minimum wage, things like showing up early, staying up late, have integrity in the workplace, treat customers and coworkers with respect giving us some options if we don't get into the, not only our elite school choice but if we don't get into a four-year school choice giving us some options what about sell real estate he says become a real estate agent is one of the best options out there young men and women not interested in the four years of college but are interested in high income can get into real estate he also suggests volunteering 
and getting some other experience that way. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about creating your strategy. We'll be right back. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com and for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or bonniegp at aol.com. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Today we're talking about the college cheating scandal. If you haven't heard about it, um, it was reported that Lori Laughlin and Felicity Hoffman, along with 30 other wealthy parents, have been charged with Fraud following an investigation into a massive college admission scam. They were trying to game the system so they could get their own children into elite colleges. And I think, you know, all of this has a lot to do with personal development, building a vision, trying to accomplish more for ourselves, or in this case, our children. And I think that, you know, we get to a point where we've got a goal in mind and we're, we've got a strategy in place. We're properly executing tactics. And then at some point we have to realize we have a dilemma. Either we are not going to reach that goal using the current tactics or we have to change tactics In this case, those mothers decided to use illegal, immoral tactics to try and advance the goal that they had set. And in many cases, I would assume that this really wasn't even the child's goal, but it was the parent's goal. What does that mean for us and how can we apply that to strategy? When we talk about strategy, we have a systematic approach. It's a five-step process where you go through the awareness, assessment, and analyze, strategize, and plan, implement your plan, and support an evaluation. So from an awareness perspective, we had these parents who had grand visions. They had grand goals. They had these coaches telling them how wonderful their child's life would be if they just got into these elite universities. You're going to be able to meet world leaders, Bill Gates, CEOs of other large organizations, you're going to be able to hobnob with them. You're going to use them as a resource. You know, they made it sound like, you know, going to these schools is going to give you all these benefits. The curriculum's harder. You're going to get into, you know, additional programs and graduate school and other things. And I think part of that is that, you know, buyer beware. What are they selling? So as we look at this from uh, creating our strategy approach, if you have this vision, this grandiose vision, goals that you want to achieve. 
And you do get to a point where you're not going to achieve the goal without doing something illegal. It's probably time to pause and say, is it worth going to jail to accomplish this goal? Because that's exactly what's being faced right now. Also, I think, too, you know, there's the ethical and the moral implications of this as well. So as you're thinking about your own goals, from an awareness perspective, are you to a point where you're not going to reach that goal? And if so, why not? So we want to assess and analyze, analyze the situation. Look at this from a different perspective. Get some feedback. Get some coaching. Figure out exactly what is going on here. It might be that you know that you're not going to reach that goal. Would it be possible to change the goal? Well, it is. The strategy you, you're you using to get a college education is still the strategy you can use and follow, but it might not be the exact path that you had planned. So we want to understand, are there other things that we could be doing to reach that same Cool. There's more than one college. There's more than one elite college. There's more than, you know, one four-year university. You have to have an A and a B. If that doesn't work out, there's community college. If that doesn't work out, there's trades. You might find that as you're looking at your strategy and your plan, that you would be much, much happier in a skilled trade position than you would in some sort of a white-collar sort of job. Or you might find that you are you know, are going for this skilled trade and you do have the aptitude, you do have the ability, and you like working in the white-collar environment. So you have those choices. The key is for us to really start to think about strategically what should we be doing. And if you do enjoy working with your hands, building things, and you also aspire to own your own business, why couldn't you start a business in that trade? So there's lots of opportunities. But we need to take a look at our actions and see exactly what are those actions that we're doing, how, and measure them. How are they, or are they, getting us any closer to that goal that we've set for ourselves? And if they're not, it's time to put new strategies in place, new tactics, tactics designed to help us get to our goal. It's perfectly fine to hire a coach to help you tutor for the SAT or the ACT. That's fine. So you could still, if you want to get into elite school, hire the tutor and go through the training and take practice courses. But if you get to a point where you're not passing it or you're not getting a high enough score to get into that school and you have to make the decision, do I bribe somebody or do I pay somebody to go take that test for me? That's where it's a hard stop. You have to start thinking about, well, what is the implication of my actions? And if it's illegal or immoral, you could end up in jail or you know, hurting somebody. So once you've really looked at your tactics and the strategies that you want to implement, it's time to think about implementation of your plan. And I probably should have said before you implement it, also think about the cost-benefit analysis. You know, what is it going to cost me in terms of time investment, people, money, resources to go down this path? And at the end of the day, is that really where I want to be if I go down that path? Is it worth that investment? And then once you've answered that question, you can think about how you're going to implement your plan. In some cases, you're well on your way towards reaching a specific goal, and life happens. Something's going to put you off. Something's going to make you stop and have to think and switch your tactics. You're going to have to adapt, adjust. And I think that's one of those situations where these mothers ran into an issue where they didn't want to adjust. They wanted to go down that same path. They were going to go down that same path. And jail time didn't matter. Unfortunately, it's not a victimless crime because not only does it impact those students who had could have gotten into these elite colleges, but it also impacts the children of those parents 
what will they think of their parents for doing what they did to make their life better? You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. When we come back, we're going to talk about putting your plan in place. We'll be right back. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. And welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and you're listening to my strategy. Well, this week we've been talking about the college cheating scandal, talking about the uh, parent strategy and their choice to use illegal tactics to try and game a system and get their children ahead. Of course, this thing's got national attention. And is something that is, um, you know, really, it's going to impact the way things happen. I mean, number one, the college admission scandal has sparked a $500 billion lawsuit. So there's a there's lawsuits being filed as we speak uh, to try and uh, on behalf of those students who did not get admitted into elite schools. You know, now that they know that there's bribes being paid. That there's coaches who are doing illegal activities, there's that whole legal implication. Also, there's the implication of the standardized tests. In many cases, these standardized tests provide tutoring. They provide, you know, extra time for those who need it. Well, in this case, they took advantage of the extra time by having their children pretend they were stupid so that they could get more time to take the test. There's also those out there who just are trying to get the answers to the test questions, and that's not right either. Now, I think it comes down to, you know, why did all of this happen? And I think all of this happened because we had a goal, a vision of what we wanted for our children or for ourselves, and that goal was something that we were not willing to waver on. We were we set our mind up to it and we were not willing to adapt. As a result of not being able to adapt, parents were standing firm by their strategy. They were standing firm by the tactics. They decided that rather than change their goal, their vision of what they wanted or would be suitable for their children, they decided to turn to illegal measures to get what they wanted. And I mean, we're all faced with this on a daily basis. We want to achieve, get to a certain goal, and we know that there are shortcuts we can take. Other people have taken those shortcuts. It would be easy to take the shortcut because then you're going to get that goal sooner. So think about it. I mean, is it worth the risk 
we learned in 2011 that Williams Bolar went to jail for falsifying her daughter's home address. And here's a woman who was getting a nine-year-old and a ten, a 12-year-old into a better school district by using her father's. So it's her father's address that she used on the form. And she ended up going to jail and having to pay a $70,000 fine just for that. I think it all comes down to, you know, I mean, while we try and put all the measures we can in place to make things as fair as they can, life is not always fair. Everyone is going to have some sort of advantage and you can't get past that. Let's look around you. When you were in school, there might have been students who ran faster, got better scores on tests than you did, had parents who made more money, had newer cars, better clothes. There's always something out there. I think part of life is accepting what we do have and using, doing the best we can with it. And the way we do that is we really start to think about creating our strategies and our tactics and maybe even changing our goal. Choose a goal that aligns with our core competencies, that is something that we can achieve, that's something that's going to help us and make us feel fulfilled and give us meaning in this life. And if it's illegal, immoral, or just doesn't feel right, then you probably shouldn't do it. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you missed the broadcast, you can find us on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. And if you'd like to have something covered in the show, send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com or give us a call at 844-MY-STRATEGY. We'll see you next time. This has been My Strategy with your host, John M. Hawkins. Listen each week as John reminds us that just like elite athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of their coaches, he is here to help you achieve your highest goals possible. Here each week on My Strategy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.